So the first group that we want to have a look at are the alkanes. Now the alkanes are hydrocarbons and hydrocarbons are compounds which contain just carbon and hydrogen in their structure. They're also known as saturated hydrocarbons because the alkanes are characterized by a single bond. Now there's a number of different rules that we need to use when we're working through the naming of these different types of compounds, but the two key ones that we need to start with are a prefix and a suffix. The prefix is an indication of the number of carbon atoms. So we need to count up the number of carbons in the longest continuous chain. So if there are side chains and you, and you move off to the side, you can't rejoin the main chain. You must have one continuous. It can uh, bend, but it must be one continuous line of carbons. And whatever number that is, that will correspond to a name. If there is only one carbon, the name, uh, the prefix will be meth. Uh, if there are two, it's eth. Three would be prope. Four would be but. And then we have pent, hex, hept, and oct, which are probably prefixes you're a little bit more familiar with. And that's for five, six, seven, and eight. And we're only expected at this point to go up to eight carbons in length. So that should be the maximum size that we need to deal with. The second part of the name, or the suffix, is the functional group. Now in this case, the functional group is a single bond between adjacent carbons. The single bond uh, is what characterizes the alkanes. And you can actually see from the name alkane itself, we actually have uh, what, what effectively would in um, algebra account for an X. The alk is like the general um, term here, could be anything. Um, depending on the number of carbons. And the ane is the specific functional group. So this remains, and we substitute alk for however many carbons we have as our prefix. So here you can see there are one and two carbons, the, the, black, the little black balls are carbons. So there are two carbons in this compound. And so therefore, the prefix would be eth. Because it's only a single bond between the two carbons, then that means that we have an ane as our suffix, and therefore we have the compound known as ethane. Now here's another one. Here's a compound that I've made out of the little Molly Mod kits. This particular one has one, two, three, four carbons, and then a number of hydrogens around those. As a little aside, it's important that when you are drawing, and I'll draw this for you in just a moment in terms of its structural formula, you need to make sure that every carbon has four bonds. Now, occasionally they may bond with more than one bond between two atoms, um, but either way, they always need to have, all our carbons need to have four bonds. So it's a good, uh, quick way of double checking that you've drawn uh, a molecule correctly. So this one has four. So if we were to draw this particular molecule, then it would look like this. So what I do is make sure that I've got enough um, bonds to ensure that there are four bonds around every carbon. And once I've put all of the important um, things that I need to put in, then I just fill everything else up with hydrogens. So in this case, it's all hydrogens around the carbons. So we have uh, a four carbon and three, five, seven, ten hydrogens. So the molecular formula for this compound would be C4H10. But what's its name? Well, its name um, is the name that we give to a compound that has four carbons. So therefore, that would be its prefix. And its suffix would be the fact that there's only single bonds. So therefore, that's going to be an ane. So the name of this compound would be butane. When we're talking about methyl groups, what we're talking about is an additional hydrocarbon that sits on the side. Now, if I was to add this to this particular molecule, if I put it in the position on the end, then all I'm going to do is to increase the length of the chain. So now I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five carbons in this chain. 
And so therefore, since it's still only single bonds, it would now be called pent. But if instead of attaching it to an end, I decided to attach it to one of these uh, more central ones, then when I'm counting my longest chain, I can count one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, but one of these ones is not anymore going to be part of my longest chain. And that means that if I, if I um, orient this in such a way as to leave this little extra group sitting above that main chain, then you can see that the main chain now only has four carbons, so it's back to being butane. But I need to take account of this extra little group over here, this CH3 group. And this CH3 group here, um, being one carbon, is going to be called a methyl. So you remember from the uh, previous slide, we were looking at the fact that we had methyl and ethyl groups. So methyls are where we have one carbon and ethyls are where we have two carbons. And that name is going to go at the front of the rest of our name. So if we, if we go back and remember that our four carbon alkane was butane, then if we've got this little side chain sitting here, then we're going to call it methyl butane. Now one extra complication which will arise as we uh, get further into our nomenclature rules is that occasionally you may need to locate where that particular methyl group is. In this case we know it can't be on an end carbon because that would increase the size of the chain and go from four to five carbons and, and therefore we would have a pent rather than a but. Uh, but where it is currently, it's sitting on one of the two middle carbons. So if we were to count the longest chain, which is one, two, three, four, you can see that our methyl group comes off the second carbon. Of course, if I count from the other end, one, two, three, four, then it would be coming off the third carbon. So what do I do if I'm not sure if it's coming off the second or the third? Well, what I would need to do is I would need to select the smallest number. So the smallest number in this case would be two, but irrespective of which way I orient this molecule, it's only going to be two. It cannot be three because if I count three from one end, it would be two from the other end. So this is uh, an issue that we're going to be looking at a little bit when we look at nomenclature, which is the issue of what we call ambiguity. Numbering is critically important where we have ambiguity. So if I was to say to you, draw methyl butane, and you weren't sure where you should put the methyl group, I would need to give you a number in order to locate that particular methyl group. However, when I ask you to draw methyl butane, there is only one option for you, and therefore I don't need to give you a number in this case. We'll look at some examples as we go through these videos of where this, uh, this ambiguity arises and we have to be very specific in our numbering systems.